planning a trip to Bangkok, but you're a bit puzzled on where to stay, well, we're gonna break it down for you in the top three areas. Plus, stick around to the end of the video for some honorable mentions. It comes down to budget, length of stay, and what you wanna get out of the big mango, but I'll help you with all of that. We are in area number one on my list, Sukhumvit, and the name comes from the main road here and it's a great area for shopping, hotels, and yes, nightlife. Uh, I just got back home after a long day out and about in Bangkok, looking at these three areas that we're about to see in the video. And I wanted to explain why I'm making this video. It's because in my first visit to Bangkok, I made a lot of mistakes. I stayed in the wrong areas and it took me a long time to figure it out. So hopefully in this video, I can share with you my knowledge so you're not gonna make the same mistakes. Now get back out there uh, on the Sukhumvit. <laughs> Look at that, they're unloading the San Miguel Light and the Singa beer. Let me know down below which is your favorite beer when you're in Bangkok. We're making our way from the Nana BTS stop. And the BTS, well that's the SkyTrain that runs above here and it's super convenient for getting your way around town. But we're making our way by foot from the Nana stop all the way up to the next stop, the Asok stop. After that, we get on to the Prong Pong, and that's another area heading further east in this area, what we're called Sukhumvit. Now, you can hear with all the hustle and bustle and all the noise, it's a popular, busy area. And with that, you get a lot of shopping, food options, and a place up here I wanna show you. This is Terminal 21, well backlit behind me, and we are at the Asok stop, the Asok BTS stop. In this area, well, it's a great area because it's the intersection between the SkyTrain BTS and the underground Metro MTS. To the south there, another great reason you might wanna stay in the Asok area are two massive parks, Benjikiti and Lumpini, and right to the north of the Asok station, right behind me, well, it's the mall, Terminal 21. It's hard to believe, but Terminal 21 is now not the most modern mall in the area, but it's the perfect anchor to base yourself at the intersection of the public transportation lines. Plenty of hotels in the area to choose from. And oh, did I mention the nightlife? Right over that way is Soy Cowboy with all sorts of bars, lights, and music running throughout the night. And over this way, near the Nana stop, well, it's the infamous Nana Plaza. Again, lights, go-go bars, beers, music, everything you want to pass the evening. So do you cut a mango banana? Uh, no sugar, cup and cup. This is one of my favorite things in Terminal 21. It's Pier 21, the food court, and it's super, super inexpensive. I don't know how to keep the prices so low. Several times throughout my stay in Bangkok, I'll come to Pier 21 to have lunch because you can get your lunch here for about mm, two US dollars. And at the end, well, why not get a happy ending with a smoothie? Uh, a couple of little tips for you. If you're coming here for lunch or anywhere around Bangkok, get there before the lunch hour rush. Look at all these people going up now to get their foodie fix on. Another thing, I'm heading over to the BTS SkyTrain now. You can't bring food and drinks on, so I've got to finish this first. We are one stop east of the BTS stop, a soak at the BTS stop, Prong Pong, and what could be the epicenter of Bangkok shopping. Although those who prefer area two in this video would strongly disagree with me, but we'll get to that. Off the SkyTrain stop, you enter into the M district and what could be a great place for you to stay. We're at the Eastern or perhaps central end of the Sukhumvit area, area number one in our three part area of today's video. And this area has several different malls. The first that was established here in 1997, well, it's this one right here, Emporium. As you can see, this is a bit of Beverly Hills in Bangkok. 
Gucci over my right, Tiffany right here, and oh yeah, if you want a Louis Vuitton bag, you got that here. My favorite of the three is the one we just entered here, M Quartier. Up at the top, it has one of my favorite movie theaters. Also, if you're traveling with kids, keep this in mind. There's a cool kids area up there with simulated bungee jumping, a little skateboard park, and all sorts of activities your kids can get into. Down on the ground floor, there's a pretty decent food court, food market. There's also the gourmet market, shopping center, grocery store, if you need to buy a few things for your Airbnb if you're staying around this area. It's equally as upscale to the uh, Emporium across the way. And smell the aroma here. They have a percent Arabica right here, one of my favorite coffee shops when traveling. And there's also a massive green space here in the middle. And of course, there's an H&M store and all the normal shopping places that you would expect to find in a major mall. Now, keep in mind, malls are not just about shopping. They're about coming together. And when you're in Bangkok, it's about getting air conditioning, a place to cool off. We're here in January, but today predicted 35 degrees. I've already been sweating a little bit. So if you need to cool off when you're around Bangkok, the malls are a great place to do so. <laughs> I couldn't resist. We just passed through the food court, food market down on the ground floor. We saw the gourmet market. I love all the food courts that are within these malls uh, in Bangkok. And believe me, if you're in Bangkok, you can really kind of center your life and your stay around the mall. And then during the afternoon, head out and see a temple or one of the other famous sites. Making our way from the M Quartier and the Emporium, or we're gonna pass what's a cool little park, not as big as the Benja Kitty Park or Lupini, it's Benja City. You can go in there, walk around. There's a skate park on the other end. It's a good place to chill out at the end of the day when the sun is not shining so bright. Down this new edition skywalk from the Prong Pong BTS, we're heading towards the newest mall, the newest and shiniest mall in Bangkok, and it's the M Sphere. Originally, the plan was it was going to be a sphere shape. They didn't pull that off, but what they pulled off is a cool mall. Inside there is Bangkok's IKEA. Up at the top level is the UOB Live, and that's where they're gonna be having a lot of live concerts. In there, you're gonna find tons of shopping options. You're gonna find the usual food courts with a lot of Western options. Also inside there, there's a Red Lobster. And yes, this is gigantic inside, and another testament to Bangkok's shopping scene and a reason why you might want to base yourself in the M district at the Prom Pong stop. But there's something else I want to show you. Yes, we've escaped the malls out into the side streets of Bangkok and street food, of course. All around Bangkok, you can walk down any side street, what's called a soy, and the Sukhumvit area is no different. Soy Sukhumvit 11, Soy Sukhumvit 15, and so on. All these little side streets, and they have so much life. On the side street soys, you can get better prices on food, better prices on massages, better prices on hotels. Now the food, you're gonna pay less, and it's gonna be more authentic the further you head east down Sukhumvit. I'm talking about Nana, Asok, and onwards. You're gonna get better deals on food and you're gonna get more authentic options the more you head out towards Ekamai and so forth. Hotels, expect to pay 50 to $200 a night in the Sukhumvit area. Now you can find lower prices if you head further down Asoy, further away from the main Sukhumvit BTS line. But then consider you're going to be doing more walking at the end of your vacation. So my suggestion is book a hotel right next to a BTS stop. There you're going to be able to easily hop on the SkyTrain and easily get into the air condition of the malls and out of the sunshine and enjoy your Bangkok stay. This is area number two of the day, Siam. And if you want to come to Bangkok for shopping, then this is the place. Some would say it's Bangkok's shopping mecca, and I agree to a point. 
although the M district off to the east, it's gaining ground. We're just near the Sukhumvit area, further west down the line, a short BTS ride. And in this area, from the BTS Chitlom stop, down this way to the CM BTS stop, it is packed, ram jammed with shopping malls. The area, well, is concentrated between Chitlom and Siam and centered, whoa, <laughs> and centered around the Irrawan Shrine right down there. We are outside the Central World Shopping Mall, Bangkok's second largest shopping mall behind only the Icon CM, the new shopping mall down there on the Chow Praia River. It has this large outdoor area here where there's currently a Christmas tree and they have so many festivities including the New Year's Eve countdown and Southeast Asia's largest Apple store. It looks like a UFO, but I was just talking to an employee in there and it's designed, inspired by Thailand's biggest tree off to the west of Bangkok in a province there. And inside, it is quite an impressive building structure and a great place to shop for your new iPhone. This place is the ninth largest shopping mall in the world, according to some of my loose research. It has the biggest H&M store in all of Asia, and I was just in there. It also includes a coffee bar to boot. Though it has a weak food court, it's my favorite shopping mall currently in Bangkok. If you stay in this area, you're gonna be surrounded by malls. Besides Central World, we have Central Embassy over that way, Siem Paragon, Siem Square, and the massive classic MBK Center. What's great is that the skywalk that connects between the BTS stations also connects you to all the different malls. So if it's raining, if it's a blistering hot day like it is today, you can escape and walk this way. I don't know which mall we're in anymore. I think we're in CM Square. And I promise this is not a video about malls. This is about the three best areas to stay in in Bangkok. But so much of Bangkok's life revolves around the malls. Our third place of the day, and stick with me, we're getting there. It doesn't involve any malls, trust me. We are at the most western end of the Siam area, the second area of the day. I wanna show you where you can possibly stay when you're coming here to Bangkok. And right over here, over my left hand shoulder, well, that's the MBK Center, a classic. To think when it was opened in 1985, it was the largest shopping mall in Asia. And inside, well, you're not gonna find those typical shops that you see in all the other malls that we've been through today. Not all the big name brands, no. You're gonna find 2,000 shops in there. All sorts of places where you can find bargains, maybe knockoff brands, and other sort of things that you can grab here to take home from Bangkok as a souvenir. Eight floors of electronics insanity clothing and some food as well. Let's get in there. So when considering this area, the food, it's similar to Sukhumvit. If you head out on the side streets, you'll find good food options at lower food prices. Of course, within all these malls here, there are plenty of great food courts from high-end food to the lower end budget eating options. Hotels and what you're gonna pay for in this area well, it's similar to what you're paying for in the Sukhumvit. Perhaps you can find places from $30, and again, depending on what type of place you like to stay in, I like to stay in nice places. If you're doing booking or Airbnb, it can go from 30 a night all the way up to say around 200, 250 a night. <laughs> the NBK food court now. Out of the two areas we've seen so far today, Sukhumvit and the Siam area, both of the areas are very similar. They both offer tons of shopping. They're both well connected to the BTS line. And around the areas, there are 
plenty of hotels to choose from. Which area would I go with? Well, I would lean towards the Sukhumvit area up towards the M district. There you're gonna find more local dining options to choose from and perhaps slightly lower prices on hotels, although I'm not gonna guarantee you that. I just find over there, you're less crowded in by the big tall buildings, the big tall malls, and you have more space and it's more of a chilled out vibe. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. And I know it's a vanity metric, but a lot of you aren't yet subscribed. And the more subscribers I have means the more chances that other people are going to say, hey, wow, look at this channel. It's growing. It's large. I'm going to check it out. That means more people like you are able to see this great travel food content. So please take a moment to subscribe down below and I'm going to eat this pad Krapow. area of the day taking the sky train or underground metro well it ain't an option cup and cup, cup, and cup. we are in bang lam po home of the infamous khao san road our third area third option of the day where you can stay and this is well this is the home of the largest backpacker community in the entire world and home to cheap and plentiful accommodation especially if you're a backpacker looking for a hostel or something cheap and if you're looking for some elephant pants in the daytime it's shops street food and temples but in the nighttime this area comes alive people from all around the world merge here on Khao San Road and the roads adjacent here in Bang Lang Po you can drink eat have a good time with like-minded people look at that pad thai this area well it's clearly a party spot but you can find accommodation on the cheap and especially and live music as well especially if you're a backpacker willing to stay in a hostel and share a room with others you can find a place to sleep for as little as five dollars a night five dollars a night now, if you want a hotel, a room to yourself, you're gonna pay a bit more, but it's still less expensive than the other two areas that we've explored so far today. It's a friendly party atmosphere down here, and the night's still young. It hasn't quite kicked off yet, but you're able to see there's shops all around, tattoo parlors, places where you can get balloons, places where you can get a little bit of smoke, and of course, places where you can get a cold Leo or a Singa beer whatever type of beer you're into. And of course, there are lady boys, there's dancing, go-go bars, everything you want from a party atmosphere in Partyville. Is this the real Bangkok? Yeah, probably not. But if you step away from Khao San Road, just a few blocks over, you'll reach Chinatown. Or over that way, you're along the Chao Praia River. And around there, well, that's Bangkok. And you'll find plenty of great food options in that area. You'll also see all the temples, so you're close to all the historical action. Remember, this was the original Bangkok. This is where they put in the capital, they put in the palace, and it became the center of Bangkok for many years. Now, of course, it's Partyville, it's Khao San Road, it's drinking all night long. But if you stay around here, you can also sneak out to the little side streets and get a taste of what Bangkok's really like. The big drawback I see staying in the Khao San area, the, the Bang Lam Po area, is that it's far from the business area, the center of town, all the shopping malls, and it's not connected with public transportation. That means you're gonna have to take a motorbike taxi, a tuk-tuk, or another means to get to the shopping areas and the other parts of Bangkok where the real heart of Bangkok is these days. However, if you're just in Bangkok for a couple of days and need a place to stay before heading south to the islands or heading up north to Chiang Mai and want a little bit of party, this could be your spot. Now I mentioned at the start of this video I'd give you a couple of honorable mentions and those are the Sea Loam area. It's Bangkok's Wall Street. It's its financial district. There you're gonna find great hotels. Think mid to upper end hotels. Plenty of hotels around, also plenty of food options in that area. And another great thing, it's well connected to the public transportation. 
the BTS and also close to the MTS underground. And another location is along the Chow Praia River. Over there, you're gonna find mid to upper range hotels and upper range, upper end. I'm talking about the Shangri-La Hotel with views out over the river, right across the river from the big Icon Siam Mall. And what's better about that than here along the Khao San Road? Well, you don't have all the party atmosphere if you're not into the parties. And the other thing is connected to the BTS, so better public transportation options. Wow, so many great places, even here in this busy tourist area of Khao San Road. And we're on an adjacent street to Khao San right now. If you want plenty of other information about Bangkok, a guide that you can have offline in your pocket when you're traveling around the Big Mango. Well, I made an e-guide with all sorts of things, how to get to and from Bangkok, how to get around Bangkok once you're here, places to see, things to do, best places to stay, like what we're going over in this video, hotels versus Airbnbs. The music's going on, no one's there. It's all in there, all distilled, the things like temples and malls, everything you want to know, there's a link to download it below. Well, there we have it, folks. Got the little cold beer to polish off the night. Khao San Road, Bang Lam Po. People love it or hate it, take it or leave it. My recommendation on where to stay during your Bangkok adventure, well, if it's your first time here in the Big Mango and you want to see all the temples and get down to the goodness and you only have a couple of days, this area, Khao San Road, Bang Lam Po, it's a great area to stay in. If you're staying for a little bit longer and you want to concentrate on shopping, well, my recommendation is Sukhumvit over Siam. I like that area, especially if you're staying up towards the M district. It's a great area and plenty of hotels, also Airbnbs that you can look into. Now, if you need to know how to get from the airport, how to survive that first hour from the Bangkok airport to the center of town, everything you need to know, check out this video I made here. Click on it, I'll see you there. Get ready for a whirlwind tour through the first hour, your essential guide to conquering the airport.